This video is supported by Brilliant. Hey hey, Marcus House with you here, and I hope everybody is having a happy holiday for all of you that are having some, for everybody else, welcome to the club because there is no rest for us either. We've got Starship development, we have the first Starlink mission to launch into the new shell, but are they different satellites? We have the EROS mission and a lot more, so sit back and enjoy the very last video of the year. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Starbase Texas has of course been smashed with some pretty unfavourable weather over the past week or so. Sheriff Eric here announcing that Highway 4 had been closed due to the Arctic blast. That looks very chilly, doesn't it? There are still quite a lot of things that we can see going on that are worth diving into though as SpaceX prepare for the next set of static fires. Firstly, the Massey site here has been a pretty constant hive of activity now, certainly an area of focus for SpaceX over the past few months at least. Just last week, in fact, Starship Gazer captured the latest test tank, Ship 26.1, actively being tested on the can crusher. RGV grabbed some great aerial footage of the site in progress and just a few things stand out to me. In between a lot of the work levelling the area near the Rio Grande River, here is a new concrete pad being created right here. Between this drone flight and the following flight by RGV, concrete pouring was already underway. Then in the brand new flight midweek, it's already being decked out with equipment. Just look at that that difference. The tank farm nearby is obviously expanding, and many believe that this would indeed end up becoming a Raptor testing location, somewhat like the McGregor testing site also in Texas. In fact, as a side note here, NASA Spaceflight captured a Raptor vacuum engine exploding on the horizontal test stand just recently. Now here it looked to have disassembled itself right after ignition, so it doesn't look like that was an intentional test to destruction. I think overall it would be really neat if they do end up creating a Raptor test site here at the Massey site as well. As already indicated by the testing of the E-Dome and the S26.1 test tanks, SpaceX don't need to close Highway 4 at all while these prototypes are evaluated. For that same reason, this makes it ideal to test individual Raptors from the future test vehicles if they don't fully perform to the specifications. If this does end up becoming a Raptor test facility, they don't just need the nitrogen, they need liquid methane and oxygen as well. With these three tanks to be installed on the stands here, I'm now trying to determine how they would configure this in the future. There are these three already existing which would have been loaded with liquid nitrogen up until now, and then these three new ones here are waiting to be installed on those footings. I would say that at least some of these are most likely designated for liquid oxygen as spotted by Starship Gazer during the delivery to the site. Now that just leaves the methane. Perhaps SpaceX is planning to convert some of the already installed nitrogen tanks or maybe we will be seeing delivery of another tank or two. Over at the launch site, another cryogenic test was performed on Booster 9. Again, frost was first seen appearing in the liquid oxygen tank. Only a little in the bottom of the tank this time around before detanking started, but following that, a much bigger load for the methane tank. Quite the impressive quantity actually, with it coming up to around three quarters full by the looks of that. Detanking started again, and it continued steadily as the sun set below the horizon. Work on the future vehicles continued along very nicely this week. Booster 10's liquid oxygen tank section is now 20 rings tall, and it now only needs the thrust section stacked. Earlier this week, it received the downcomer to feed the liquid methane through the liquid oxygen tank. I always love seeing that massive tube. Just look at the humans there for scale on either side. That is one of those shots that really puts the size of these components into perspective. Pretty soon, we'll have three complete boosters here ready for testing. So based on Starship developments throughout 2022, I want to know from you what you think is in store for us in 2023. Are we going to see the first successful orbital flight in the first quarter? Within the first half of the year? Surely sometime in 2023, right? I've got my opinions on this, but I am interested in yours. Here we were on the home stretch now with the 60th SpaceX launch and the final Starlink launch for 2022. Sitting atop Falcon 9 here was another batch of 54 broadband internet satellites destined for a brand new orbit recently licensed for version 2 satellites. Lifting off in the early hours of Wednesday morning from Slick 40, Falcon 9 headed skyward on a southeast trajectory. Soon after, main engine cutoff, stage separation and fairing jettison all happening quickly there, and the core stage now on its 
11th flight was on its way to try and stick its 11th landing. Now this was pretty rough looking weather conditions for the drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas some 660 kilometers downrange. In fact, you couldn't even see the drone ship at all until about 100 meters to the touchdown. That one looked like quite the challenge there and was a tad off center, wasn't it? But down safely nonetheless. That's pretty much where the webcast ended with the deployment announced minutes later on Twitter. But what was still a little unknown was whether there was any notable differences with these satellites. They certainly look the same as usual. Just compare this one to the previous launch and I can't see any differences at all. We then of course had the final launch for 2022, cruising all the way over to the west coast of the country, this time at Vandenberg Space Force Base. Here we have a SpaceX Falcon 9 loaded with the first of two Earth resource observation satellites. The first, C3-1 on this launch, is part of the NG constellation and is around 400 kilograms in weight. Its sister satellite, C3-2, isn't actually going to be launching until 2026 the final countdown of the year, and then lift off on Friday morning on the 30th of December, just after 1 a.m. Falcon 9 roared into the night sky, and this Booster 1061 was also on its 11th flight. After main engine cutoff, the second stage journeyed onto its target orbit, and the booster flipped around and headed back to Vandenberg. Yes, this was another terrific return to landing site mission. Sadly, due to the darkness, not a great deal of interesting footage of the return. Often we'll see some ground cameras watching the booster come down, but just the onboard and pad camera here watching the touchdown. You may have spotted actually just how tiny the satellite was at fairing deployment. A tiny little unit as shown here in an animation before the launch. At almost 15 minutes into the mission, the satellite deployment, and there we had it, the 61st launch of the year for SpaceX. The very last for 2022, and based on an earlier tweet this year, 2023 will be even busier. Hopefully still aiming for 100 launches. Soon though, emphasis is surely going to be on the total payload to orbit as the new benchmark and not the launch frequency. With Starship to be put into service, payload mass to orbit will be the real metric that could blow all other years out of the water. Now, if you have been subscribed to my little channel for quite some time here, you know how incredibly important that you are to me and what we all do here. And in the final days, we almost made it to 450,000 subscribers, which is a goal that I've had for the last six months or so. And hey, we got close enough, didn't we? I always try to think of this as your channel, not mine. I'm just here to bring you everything that I can each week as best as the team and I can pull it together. But one thing that you may not realize is just how instrumental Brilliant have also been supporting the channel, not just this year, but since the start of 2020. That is three entire years now. There is no doubt about that. It has allowed us to continually increase the size of the team, the quality of the work, and it has certainly saved my sanity more than a little, I can tell you right now. It is with that note that the final video of the year once again is thanking this incredible educational service. Brilliant is a wonderful tool that unlocks the ability to see math and science in a new way. The course content, along with their daily challenges, helps you to not only see many of these fascinating concepts visually, but also to interact with them. There are no tests and no grades. You are just here to challenge yourself. All you do is just select any topic that looks interesting to you and just jump right in. You would be amazed as well at the huge volume of lessons here. Thousands of them and exclusive fresh stuff added every single month. Just as a great example, I am a massive fan of the Kurtzgazart channel as I'm sure that loads of you are too. Well, there is a terrific brand new collaborative course made here with Brilliant. Do you want to know how much energy is needed to have our little astronaut fly by a planet versus getting stuck in orbit? Well, illustrated in the terrific Kurtzgazart style, you can now explore how paths are influenced by gravity by just adjusting the starting position and speed. That is so cool and just the tip of the iceberg with many exercises that will get that incredible brain working. Well maybe not working so well in the case of this crazy virus. I just love this stuff and spending a little time learning each day can have a huge impact. Simply visit brilliant.org slash Marcus House or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thank you Brilliant for all your support over the past three years. And with that, it is time to wrap up this final episode for 2022 with a very special look back at what has been an incredible year. A few quick things that I want to ask you after this, but I think you'll agree this has been epic. Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here and welcome to 2022. Happy New Year to you all. We've got a bunch to cover today, including Starship and Starbase.
lift off. Lift off and Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center, carrying our stack of 49 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. Ignition and lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower, lifted off from Cape Canaveral Falcon Space Force Station. maybe make out those fairing halves in that live view from the ground. And lift off. In Volca and Pole. Go Falcon, go Codwell. Stage separation confirmed. Falcon carrying the Cosmos SkyMed satellite to a polar sun synchronous orbit. What an incredible sight to see. Lift off of LA 7. Go Falcon, go, go. Stage one, boost back startup. And as you can see, a picture perfect stage landing stage. of this first stage booster. confirmed. And liftoff of Falcon 9, Starlink 4-11. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base, carrying our stack of 50 Starlink satellites to orbit. Starlink, deploy confirmed. Lift off of Noah's Notice Team, our newest weather sent from the sky to help keep us safe here on the ground. Falcon 9 lifting off from Space Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. Power and telemetry nominal. Carrying 47 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying our stack of 48 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit.
everything we have lived up. Electron is airborne after our 26th launch from LC1. Separation of the NILESAT 301 satellite. Electron launch vehicle has successfully lifted off the pad and is on its way to space. Lift off of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, launching Dragon for the 25th mission to resupply the International Space Station. And so that is Cirrus 25 gently floating away. Marks the 126th landing of a Falcon 9 first stage. Acquisition of signal. Off of the Atlas V Rocket for United Launch Alliance carrying Sibbers Geo 6 for the United. 
this day's Space Force. Beautiful lift off of Falcon 9 from Vandenberg Power Space Force Falcon. Station. Lift off the Falcon 9, go Falcon, go Star. Falcon 9 accelerates space flights Sherpa LTC-2 and our Starlink satellites out into space. Lift off of Falcon 9. Go Blue Walker 3, go Starlink. officially ingress from Dragon Endurance. Off of Progress 82, the next vehicle in the supply chain to the International Space Station. We have 
Liftoff of the Atlas V, carrying JPSS-2 and Lofton. Liftoff of Intelsat Galaxy 31 and 32, go Falcon 9. Three, two, one, boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis 1. We rise together, back to the moon and beyond. And lift off the Falcon 9. Go to that 10B, go to 10.49. This is SpaceX's 54th mission this year and 5th Dragon Flight to station for 2022. Stage two flying away in stage one, producing that epic cloud. Oh my gosh, look at that. The iSpace Series One lunar lander is now on its way towards the moon. Allumage des EAP décollage. Under its chutes, descending towards Splashdown. And lift off of FPS at power. Go Falcon 9, go FPS. Falcon 9 has lifted off from pad 39A, carrying our Starlink payload into space. Stage. Now that was an incredible year, wasn't it? The entire industry has really kicked itself into high gear and I so appreciate you being here to take this ride with us. A gross understatement, of course, is to say that we wouldn't be here without the incredible patrons and the many, many more in the space community that have literally changed my life. And actually, it's not just mine, it's the terrific production team working with me here as well. So it isn't just me thanking you, it is all of us. Adam or Gameplay Review UK and Tiago helping with editing, Brenton, Brendan, Wilco and Virtue all helping out as members of the team throughout 2022. This opportunity to work in this dream role is absolutely not taken lightly and we certainly aim to fill the huge shoes that are required to cover this increasingly amazing industry. We have got hugely exciting things to cover this year. New players coming into the market such as Stoke Space, Relativity Space. We've got Rocket Lab and the new Neutron development, Vulcan and maybe even new Glenn at some point, and of course the ever amazing Starship and upcoming orbital test flights, all of which lies right in front of us. What 
are you looking forward to the most? And what is your favorite event from 2022? Let me know in the comments below and thank you sincerely for being here, loving what we do, for picking up our merch like this, liking and watching videos all the way through. It has all helped more than you can ever imagine. My only wish is that you've enjoyed the year of updates and deep dives. Deep dives like this one here or that one there or either of those two. <laughs> thank you everyone for an amazing 22. I'll catch you next Saturday in 2023.